On behalf of the All Ireland Institute of Hospice and Palliative Care, I'm delighted to welcome you to the sixth in our PCRN webinar series. We are recording this, but we're not going to record the Q&A. I'd like to extend a particular welcome to our presenters, Dr. Sujo Samanadan, Dr. Aoife de Bruyne, both of whom are from UCD, and Emma Lockney, who's from the Fulbright Commission in Ireland. Just a really quick introduction, Suja is Director of the Bachelor of Science Nursing um, Registration Programme in UCD, the Children's General Registration Programme, and Assistant Professor in Children's Nursing in the UCD School of uh, Nursing, Midwifery and Health Systems. Aoife de Bruyne is an Assistant Professor at Astra Fellow in the UCD Centre for Research, Education and Innovation in Health Systems, and in the School of Nursing, Midwifery and Health Systems in UCD. And Emma Lockney, she's the Communications Manager from the Fulbright Commission in Ireland. And Emma is going to kick off for us and give us an introduction to what the Fulbright Award is all about. So Emma, I'm going to hand over to you. Thank you very much. Great, thank you very much, Cloda. And thanks to Suja and Aoife and Cloda for organising today and for inviting me uh, to speak. I'm just going to share some slides here now and explain to you a little bit about what the Fulbright Awards are about um, and how you can apply. Um, so as Clodagh said, my name is Emma Lockney. I'm the Communications Manager with the Fulbright Commission in Ireland. Um, and today we're going to be talking about opportunities to go to the USA on Fulbright Awards in 2021 to 2022. So Fulbright uh, gives opportunities for passionate and accomplished students, scholars, artists, teachers, professionals, from all disciplines, so not just health, but um, from all disciplines, to research, study, teach or lecture in the USA. The awards provide a monetary grant, visa administration, accident and emergency insurance, cultural and professional programming. And this involves, the programming involves orientations in Ireland and the US. So you'll be introduced to lots of other Fulbrighters and a, a vast um, global network within your time in the US and indeed when you return to Ireland. There's a really big Fulbright alumni network in Ireland as well as globally. So it's a great um, <clears throat> uh, community to link in with. So in terms of applications, our application period opened on Monday the 31st of August. Um, it'll be closing on the 2nd of November. So we'll need all applications in by then. Reviews will be taking place November to December. These are technical reviews. Then if you're shortlisted, you would be um, called for interview during um, between January and February 2021 and then offers are made in March 2021. So the earliest you'd be able to go out if you applied between this August and November would be August 2021. Um, so in terms of planning your application, um, this is a great start coming to this webinar. Um, we'd also recommend that you review the information carefully on our website. There's a lot of information there on the awards, um, lots of F FAQs um, you know, that we've accumulated from over the years that people will ask. Um, we also will send you the guidelines once you contact us now that the awards are open. The Irish guidelines um, will, will really take you step by step through the application. Um, so once you have those, you'll have all the details you need. Um, before that, you need to choose your award category. So I'll run through those award categories shortly. Uh, you need to find a course or a probably more appropriate for this audience, uh, plan a research proposal for what you want to do on your Fulbright Award. You need to research what it means to be a Fulbrighter. So there is um, an ethos for Fulbright um, in terms of, you know, international relations, enhancing international relations, um, enhancing communications between academic and professional networks um, across the globe, um, as well as giving back to society and cultural exchange. So it's really important to have a grasp of this. And I would recommend speaking to our alumni and um, looking at our website, our YouTube channel for videos of alumni to get a better understanding of this. And you will, of course, hear from Suja and Aoife today, and they'll probably touch on, touch on that aspect too. So you can register your interest now on our website, it's fulbright.ie, um, and then we'll send you those guidelines um, and the online application link. So the application itself is a global application, so people applying from all over the world. So you really need those Irish guidelines um, to, to assist you step by step through it, um, particularly because there are some questions in terms of English language proficiency and things that just won't apply to Irish awardees. 
and our guidelines will say you can skip this bit or you know you must fill out this bit so that's uh, key in terms of the award categories there are four so you'll be choosing one of these four if you're applying this year or in the future the Irish Student Awards are for postgraduate research or degree programs the Scholar Awards are probably most appropriate for today. They're for academic or professional research and or lecturing. The Tech Impact Awards may also be relevant. Um, these are for academic or professional research with an ICT um, information communications technology focus. And then um, if you know anyone uh, who is fluent in the Irish language, um, you can go off in, on an FLTA award to teach the Irish language in the US too. So the Irish uh, Scholar Awards, which I think are most relevant to you today, um, are for postdoctoral or professional um, research or lecturing for in all disciplines again. And uh, we have uh, these all discipline categories, but we also have a number of sponsored awards within the Scholar Award category. So I'll touch on the most appropriate of those after. But the general all discipline Scholar Awards, you need to have a PhD or five years relevant professional experience to be eligible for these. Uh, as I mentioned, they're for research and or lecturing in the US. Um, you need to establish affiliation with your US institution of choice. So you can choose to go anywhere, um, you know, whether it be a higher education institution or, um, you know, a hospital organization. Um, you can go for a minimum of three months and a maximum of 12 months. And the maximum award is $40,000. And this is dependent on, this would be the maximum award for if you were to go the full 12 months. Um, but it will depend on where you're going and the stipend is assessed on the cost of living essentially wherever you are going and for how long you're going. So the Tech Impact Awards, I just thought I'd touch on these too in case they're, they're um, relevant for any of you. Um, these are also for scholars professionals in any discipline but it would be, your project would be using ICT, applying ICT to, to your research. So for these ones, you need to have a PhD or three to five years relevant experience, professional experience. So they're really giving preference to early career researchers. Therefore, the proposal should be non-commercial research exploring transformative power of ICT. These are much shorter term awards. So the minimum you can go for is two weeks and the maximum is three months. So these ones, if you have a kind of tech aspect to your research proposal um, and you can only go for a shorter period, these ones might be the ones for you. Um, these ones are a max award of $12,000 and that's again for the full three month period for the maximum period. Then Suja and Aoife who will be speaking um, went to the US or, and Suja is going to be going and Aoife has already been um, to, on a health impact scholar award. Okay, so these ones are one of our sponsored scholar awards um, and they're specifically to undertake professional uh, research or professional development in any area of health. Again, they have their own kind of award period. So the minimum one for this is three months and the maximum is six months in the US. So they're open to health professionals, senior health research administrators, health research managers and researchers in general. So you must hold an honours degree and five years relevant professional experience for this specific Health Impact Scholar Award. It's worth noting, I will read this out because it's very important. Um, the US Department of State has designated the Educational Commission for Foreign Medical Graduates as the sole agency authorized to sponsor alien physicians for internship, residency and specialized clinical training in the United States. So Fulbright grantees cannot simultaneously be sponsored by ECFMG Therefore, proposals for medical research involving clinical training, patient care or patient contact cannot be approved under the Fulbright programme. So it's worth bearing that in mind. So research proposals for a Fulbright award should be more about you know, observation, consultation, um, teaching or research. And there was, there's a forum uh, that you will be sent out that will kind of confirm that you're, you're um, on the right track for that. So some of our alumni to date for the, specifically for the Health Impact Awards, um, Suja and Aoife are pictured there. Um, and then I have included in the list here, a number of other alumni. It's not an exhaustive list. It's only some of our alum, but it's just to give you an idea of the kind of areas they're coming from, and the diversity um, of proposals and projects. Um, so we've had, you know, successful projects from general practice, psychiatry, 
radiology, um, physiotherapy, etc. So, you know, there's not just one specific area we're looking for here. In terms of putting your application together, you'll need to um, put your personal information CV together. You need a personal statement or Fulbright statement. If you're applying for the Scholar Award category, it'll probably be phrased as the Fulbright statement. This is um, talking about yourself, essentially. So it's an element of uh, the award application that you probably wouldn't be familiar with in applying for other grants. Talking about um, why you're passionate about why, what you do, um, what you want to contribute, um, you know, overall to society um, and, you know, talking about challenges you've overcome, all of that kind of thing. It's quite personal. So it's something that we'd recommend you spend a bit of time on thinking about, maybe talking to Fulbright alumni about how they put theirs together um, to get an idea because it is kind of a foreign idea, I suppose, or concept um, to, to, to many applicants. You'll also, of course, then need your project statement to talk about your research proposal um, and, you know, lays out a timeline of what you plan to do within your award period. You'll need three recommenders. So your rec recommenders or referees will be filling out um, references for you and submitting them directly to the Fulbright portal um, online. And they'll need to get these recommendations in by the 2nd of November deadline. So it's good to give them um, the heads up, give them advance warning from today. You know, as soon as you know that you, you might be even um, applying this year, um, let them know. Obviously, they'd be busy and maybe this year even busier than usual if they're, um, you know, teaching or getting to grips with the changes going on at the moment. Um, transcripts for student applicants that may not apply to many here. Just a copy of your passport, photo page, sample of work for artists won't apply and a letter of affiliation for researchers or scholars. So once you've chosen where you want to go in the US, um, you should request a letter of affiliation um, to say that they're happy to host you. Now, you don't need this letter of affiliation um, by the 2nd of November deadline. It's not required. It will be required later in the process if you're, um, you know, called to interview or an offered um, an award. But to be honest, you know, having a letter of affiliation from that host institution saying that they really want to collaborate with you, they really want to host you, is always going to be a positive thing for both your application in the technical review as well as your interview stage. So um, another thing that I would get going on as soon as possible. If there's a finding host if you don't know where to start, if you don't know where you want to go. Um, it's a good idea obviously to research experts in your field. Who's, who's the person you would love to work with? Who's the expert, the top expert in what you do? Um, you know, don't be afraid to, to reach too high, I would say in this, um, you know, reach out to everyone you want to. Um, you might get a reply, uh, you mightn't get a reply from some, but it's, it's worth putting the, the, um, the feelers out. Uh, bear in mind, we welcome diversity. So that's in terms of organizations and geography, as well as people. So, you know, when you're thinking about a host organization, um, you don't have to be going to the biggest or the most well-renowned hospital or university. Um, think about what's appropriate for you and who you want to work with and where has the resources and facilities that suit your needs. Um, because we always welcome new collaborations. You know, Fulbright Awards are about lasting connections as well. So, you know, with your home institution, in Ireland, and the host institution in the US, you want to really set up a relationship that will be lasting. So, you know, if you're going to somewhere that has no connections with Ireland yet, um, that, that's a positive too. You could always reach out to Fulbright Irish or US alum. So Irish alum like Suja and Aoife, um, there's lots more of the, the Health Impact Awardees and all discipline awardees as well, who might be appropriate. But also bear in mind, we have, you know, I think from the programme so far to date, between Irish and US exchange in the two countries alone, there's 2,500, over 2,500 of them. So half of them, nearly half of them will be US alums. So some of them will be from hospitals, universities, from a healthcare background or health um, kind of related uh, studies. So it's worth looking through our alumni list on our website and seeing if there's anyone 
in an institution that you would like to visit, um, reaching out to them, asking them what their recommendations are. Um, use existing Fulbright links, so have a look at our sponsors online and see you know, whether you want to reach it out to HRB and talk to them or other sponsors of ours. And of course, ask your mentors who may have been to the States or have had partnerships, um, worked with people from the States and might have some connections already that you can tap into. So in terms of next steps, um, you can register on the website now. Um, I'd recommend you do that as soon as possible. So you give yourself lots of time um, to get those guidelines um, and the online application link and you can read through the kind of nitty gritty of what you need to do. Um, reach out to your recommend your recommenders, your referees, select a host institution or a number of host institutions, um, reach out to them so you can then narrow that down. Um, we would recommend, you know, that you would have a maximum of, uh, usually it's going to be one host institution, some people have had more, um, but a maximum of three really. Um, I suppose if you're only going for three to six months on the Health Impact Award, bear in mind that you know, for your project to get everything done. You don't want to have to travel too much. Um, so, so just think about things like that in terms of the timeline. Um, research the Fulbright ethos, really, really important. If you leave this bit out, um, you know, by the time you get to interview, uh, it, it will catch you there. The, the, the interview is, is mainly really talking about the cultural aspects um, of the award, um, about how you can kind of fit into the Fulbright ethos. So, it's really important to, to get to grips on this and as I said talking to alumni is really the best way um, and follow us on social media we're on uh, Twitter Facebook Instagram and LinkedIn we have lots of updates uh, webinars etc coming up so if you have any questions you can send them to awards at fulbright.ie so um, if there isn't any immediate questions I will hand over to Suja um, who is a Fulbright awardee um, for 2019 2020. Uh, thank you, Emma. I just first of all, I would like to thank uh, Cloda and the team from All Ireland um, Hospice and Palliative Care Services in Ireland. And um, thank you for giving myself, Emma, and DeFi the opportunity to be here and present, um, you know, and support Fulbright uh, scholars um, to prepare for their application. So my name is Sujia Somanathan, and I'm currently working as an assistant professor in children's nursing. So my background is rare diseases, child health and family health. So I was awarded Fulbright Health Impact Scholar in 2019 and 2020. So again, because of COVID-19, um, I will be leaving uh, for my placement early next year. At the same time, um, it's, it's a great opportunity to share some kind of tips on how I can help in terms of uh, the application process and any questions and um, you know it's always good to be connected oh, sorry so I, I this slide is very interesting because it's never too late to start and um, i just want to tell you why and um, so when i was a phd student and um, i came across and um, the Fulbright scholars in Ireland, including my own supervisor, uh, Professor Philip Larkin. He was a professor of palliative care uh, nursing from UCD at the time. So then I understood how these awards are supporting and promoting the opportunity to teach research and exchange ideas um, at the international platform like US. So I always wanted to be a Fulbright. Uh, I think that was in 2012. But at the time, same time, I was, a, I was a PhD student. Then I was a nurse and I wasn't sure whether I will get an opportunity to go and visit a place like a, the National Institute of Health. Even I was a student, um, always I dream about visiting the National Institute of NIH. You know, the name itself is, is fabulous because I'm mad into genetics and rare diseases. So the last year, August, um, early August, I had an opportunity to visit, opportunity to visit uh, Washington, D.C. And I got an invitation to formally invited to um, NIH for kind of a formal orientation for a day. So I went there and I was very nervous because I wasn't sure as a nurse how I'm going to impress all these officials they do a lot of genetic genome sequencing, exome sequencing, and uh, my background is 
children's nurse caring for a child and a family in the hospital and also i was teaching at the time with ucd so i went in there but i have to admit my own experience uh, when you when you have a fulbright scholarship award especially in the us many door open for you and there are many opportunities very welcomed and i was sitting around all these official they are directors um, of rare diseases uh, center i was sitting around the table explaining and discussing my research program with rare diseases i have a number of program everything is very much focusing on psychosocial impact on children and the families but doesn't matter they were so impressed they were asking me how could we help you out to reach out your dream you know so i what i'm trying to say it is important it's never too late for anybody any healthcare professional as emma mentioned you could you could be a person with a phd or without a phd with a five year experience but only thing is make sure there is a leadership qualities and the potentials are there for you to go out to us and also if you go to america you can visit places like a washington dc and i was there and uh, it's just beautiful to see the capitol hill in the midnight so so it's, it's it's not just about doing a research it's also about you know uh, visiting the place so when you look at the health impact award there are scholar status and a professional status i know many healthcare professionals work in the hospital settings they often wondering whether this is opportunity for them yes this is the opportunity for us so if you are working in the hospital setting if you have enough experience if you have leadership quality definitely go for it and when you think about there are many scholars who is currently working in the healthcare settings um, as a part of the fulbright alumni and so it is it, it, it is for everybody and also people with a phd like a people working in the universities like any universities in ireland they have a phd status any healthcare discipline can go for this grant application so i think emma emma clearly mentioned earlier there are number of different categories and um, for example if you are too good at teaching and you really want to do something with the teaching go for lecturing and if you are really good at research and you want to do something with the research and you have a research opportunity and then you think you have both lecturing and research why don't you go for both so it's not limiting ourselves to just focus on you know so it's it's up to you to decide what you want to do so again uh, this is all in the full bright um, website you can go back and have a look but i just thought it's important for us to uh, discuss this this grant the full bright health impact won't cover attending conferences this won't allow you to complete dissertation in the us travel and consultation with a multiple institution is not part of this grant and most importantly this is when you are if you are applying for a research based impact award clinical medical research involving patient contact is not um, you know as not part of this grant application so just be, need to be mindful and also any other discipline you want to do clinical training or a patient care or patient contact is not approved under this program either so just be mindful when you preparing your application i think emma clearly highlighted earlier and um, so please please read your instruction clearly and go to the irish guideline so it's a global application but read irish guideline because some of the for example um, the eligibility requirement i think emma mentioned about english and also think about am i eligible for this grant application for example people like myself i'm living in ireland since 2003 i'm a naturalized citizen uh, that helped me to apply for the grant so if you, if, you, if i'm a non irish citizen living in ireland working in the healthcare setting that won't qualify me to apply for this grant so you need to be mindful and see am i eligible for for this grant application and there are steps like how to complete the application how to submit the application using application inspector selection process and there are number of uh, other instruction available through the website so when you look at the first step um, please read the instruction again and again the, nobody can come and tell you how important to read the instruction so make sure you read it plan ahead even i, I think i mentioned in my first slide and um, i was thinking about fulbright in 2012 i thought about maybe i go for a fulbright student award then my supervisor philip larkin i spoke to him and and he said why don't you wait until you finish your phd that give you more opportunity as a scholar so i would encourage anybody is thinking about applying for a fulbright plan ahead talk to people 
even i have to admit when i i, I was applying for the grant thankfully my colleague ifa was there and we had a numerous chat in in the corridor you know so reach out to people who you know they can help you out and we and like myself and myself and if i see it today and there are many people out there and they are very willing to support so and also when you planning this project make sure you contact your your co host institution early um i remember um emma mentioned you can have maximum 3 for example i will be going to university pittsburgh and also i'm going to work with the uh, children hospital pittsburgh because they are affiliated together then my last month of my placement i will be working with the nih so i have a total three so i can't go anymore so i uh, my plan is to be uh, there for four months to complete the project looking at a uh, evidence based care for children and families with rare conditions in the us healthcare systems so the reason i'm saying that um it's important to reach out to people early if you know someone email them if you don't know someone still you can email them and um, so i remember uh, myself and uh, ifa had a chat because i have been heard from the nih uh, the my first email and emma ifa said i know someone uh, who, who is the director of the center and uh, ifa told me at the time why don't you email him and i said oh my god do i and she said yes you need to email him so i emailed christopher austin i'm very proud to say his name and so he is the director of ncat at the nih i emailed him friday at 5 o'clock irish time then i went to the shop i came back collect my child into the car and i checked my email here it is he is so happy to accommodate my placement guys i just want to highlight people are really really out there to support you so just reach out to people it doesn't matter whether they are directors or a dean just email them and explain what you like to do. why do you want to be full bright and they will there are many people are willing to host you but do that you know the arrangement early in advance so completing your application make sure you have a clear title you know just to with the focus on the activity of your award and your curriculum which is for four pages max but i know some of you you have probably have maybe 20 or 50 we don't know but just stick with the four um letter for invitation i think i mentioned is how important to reach out to people and then if you are bringing anyone with you for example your family or a children and make sure you submit uh, the detail in early um, to to as a part of the application and um, as part of the research program you have to submit a bibliography as well so just be mindful if you are writing uh, it's like a writing a research proposal make sure you have everything in detail along with the reference list and there is uh, things like a full bright statement is about um uh, is a significance of your project and um, and then the award form nominee nominate your afraid i think there are three nominees you needed so i would recommend same with the full bright commission go to your current employer and also go for your previous employer and uh, they have to submit online to impact system so make sure you contact them and ask them in case sometimes what happen it goes to the junk mail i think i heard from uh, fulbright commission and also my colleagues so make sure you tell them that check your check their junk mail uh, to make sure they submit uh, your reference online on time and uh, so then utilize application inspector so that that help you to make sure you are completed each every part of the section and then submit online so the one the important thing is when you submit online then only you can submit the hard copy so don't uh, submit the hard copy before completing online that means you are completing incomplete application as an hard copy so again uh, teaching experience so highlight um, what course would you like to teach and curriculum planning and um, if you have a proposed teaching plan make sure you have everything uploaded including the syllabus um, then um so this kind of just just to highlight this kind of uh, guideline for a research is that's what myself and ifa did the research um part so the research is very important to highlight the background and so briefly introduce the research topic then objectives make sure you have a clear aim and objective of your project then methodology for example you have to explain what approach you are going to use whether it's going to be qualitative or quantitative or mixed method a whatever methodology you are using you have to highlight and the time frame is very important and i can't stress this anymore because 
you only have a three or four months to complete your project and you want to make sure that is completed within the time frame and um, and i and i i I, I just want to admit how much I got support from Aoife because Aoife had just been and came back to Ireland the time I was preparing. So that support really helped me in terms of bringing my proposal within the time frame. For example, the IRB, I was able to submit from Ireland. I already submitted my IRB uh, at the moment uh, because of COVID-19, I couldn't go, which means that is all been done, all been approved. My old research training is completed. So my plan now is to go and conduct my project. So you are trying to save your time as well. Then significance is important. Explain why the project is important. And um, why do you want to do the project um, in the US? Why you can't do it in Ireland? So you have to have very clear justification and evaluation and dissemination. I'm nearly there. So justification of residents in the United States is very important. Why do you want to go? So always, when you prepare any application, always think what, where, how, when, and why. And then think about, do you, do you have a solid affiliation in the US? Do you have enough knowledge to carry out this project you know, with your affiliated university? Do you have, a, do you have a, a mentor in the a US institution or you have a team? So just to think about yourself and before you plan and prepare your application. And also the time frame is important, whether you will be able to complete your project on time. The final tips, read the guideline, do your homework, and just um, why being a Fulbright matters to you. And it's important to think about why you want to be a Fulbrighter and make sure you have a referees clearly and alert them early. Project statement is about what you do on your Fulbright. Don't wait until last minute. I remember when I submitted online, um, I, it was raining heavily. I have to get the, I have to drive from UCD to Marion Square and get the parking. Uh, I just bang on time, but don't wait until the last minute like what I did. But I managed, you know. So spell check is important. You know, the Fulbright is only one L. I got confused many times. <laughs> Hopefully, if I you remember that times. Um, so email Fulbright Commission Ireland, they're very helpful. Um, I have to admit, uh, Emma and uh, Sa Sania is here and uh, Dara Fitzgerald. And they are there for you. Any questions, reach out to them. So submission deadline is 4 p.m. Monday the 2nd, November 2020. So it's so nearly there. Uh, so plan, prepare, and submit. So this fi final slide, you can see there was, I think my, uh, my group, was, there were 33 applicants, one of the highest award ever out of which 17 from UCD, I think, the highest award from UCD. And then you can see Brendan um, is uh, myself and Jonathan. We are the three Health Impact Awardees uh, in 2019 and 2020. So Brendan uh, Radiology and uh, Jonathan Haruwain is a professor of pediatrics uh, from Children Health Ireland. And uh, he looked into allergies in child health. And my, myself was, is uh, planned to do rare disease and, and you know evidence-based practice for rare disease um, for children and family in the u.s healthcare system so unfortunately i couldn't go my two colleagues went uh, but they, their placement was short but i hope i will be able to go early next year and enjoy my time uh, in the u.s and thank you very much and if you any if you have any question you can ask me now or you can wait until the last or you could email me thank you very much guys i may hand over to Eva now thank you Thanks, Suja. And thank you very much uh, to Claude and her team for inviting us to speak today. So what I'm going to do today is, I suppose, reflect mostly on my experience having been um, a Fulbright Scholar. I think Emma and Suja have done a really good job of talking you through the guidance and the practicalities. So mine will be a bit more experiential, if that's okay. So can you guys see my screen okay? Perfect. Okay. Um, so I'll just run through this briefly. Uh, as Suja mentioned, as Claude mentioned, um, I'm a member of staff in the School of Nursing and Midwifery and Health Systems. I have a psychology background, but mainly do health systems and health services research. And I was awarded the HRB Health Impact Fulbright Scholarship in 2018-2019. So in terms, I'm going to reflect briefly on my application preparation, because I think Suja's done a very detailed job of guiding you through this. Um, I have to admit I had very little knowledge of Fulbright before the process other than knowing that it was this very prestigious um, award. When it was first suggested to me that I should apply or consider applying, I actually laughed because it, it just felt a bit ludicrous because I thought Fulbright was something very important for 
proper academics who knew what they were doing or very progressed in their career already. So I suppose the first thing for me was kind of demystify it a bit and to learn more about it. And I really found that the, the website, the Fulbright website was a great source for information about that in terms of understanding what kind of people have been over before in terms of the kind of research topics and areas, what other people in UCD had been there. And that was hugely helpful, I suppose, to give me a better sense of what it was all about as well. Um, so in terms of my tips at this stage of the process, I would really advise you to meet previous awardees. I know this is something that Emma and Suja have both emphasised, but to me, that's what gave me the, the truest sense of what my experience really was. And also, I suppose, the, the depth of positivity from people that have been through the process really encouraged, strongly encouraged me to apply. It really helped me to understand the programme in terms of it not just being about the academic part of things, but really emphasising the culture exchange as well. So this is really the, the key thing that struck me in, in my preparation for my application was they wanted obviously a good research plan and a good academic plan, but also really emphasising the cultural exchange, what you felt you were bringing to the table and what you felt you wanted to get out of the experience was really key as well, both in the application and in the interview. Uh, I'd really advise people to look for a good fit with um, a collaborator. And the good fit, I suppose, can look like several different things. It might be a good fit in terms of subject matter but obviously clear synergies there as well with the person you're collaborating with. It might be a good fit in terms of sharing methodological expertise or learning from each other in a certain way, or even research, I suppose, that's focused around a specific outcome or set of outcomes. So I just think it's really important in your application to have a strong rationale for why you and why working with this person and why now in your career. So I think all those things are key to get across and quite challenging to get across and what's a brief application, but those are, for me, things that I really wanted to emphasise in my application. So Suja has touched on this and this is the feasibility of the plan. So the Health Impact Scholarship Award is a max of six months. So I think it's really important to be realistic in what can actually be achieved in that six months. Um, the six months is obviously about having an academic achievement and developing a collaboration, but it's also about having time for that cultural exchange and prioritising other cultural activities to help you learn and immerse yourself in wherever you go in the States as well. So I think the feasibility of the plan is key. While it's good to be ambitious, I think it's, make sure, it's good to make sure that you have a realistic plan as well. And so what I did in my five page research overview was to put in a small Gantt chart to demonstrate that I felt it wasn't feasible to achieve. And one of the, actually the best tips I got from a previous Fulbrighter when I attended one of the seminars in UCD a couple of years ago, was to include images in your application as well. So rather than just focus on text as we would in a typical grant application, that was actually something I, I, a tip I availed of because in explaining my methodology, I felt it was really useful for someone that wasn't familiar with the methodology to show them exactly what the outcome looks like. And I think that really helped in terms of, um, I suppose, conveying what I was trying to do to what probably was a non-expert audience because your application is likely to be sent to people outside your area of expertise as well. So that was really, really useful. And um, finally, I just wanted to um, talk about the benefit of going through the application process. So obviously Fulbright is a very competitive process and um, not everyone who will apply will be successful, unfortunately. But I think there's huge benefit in going through the application process in itself. I think it enables you to start reaching out to collaborators in the US and making those connections. So regardless of the outcome of the grant application, you're making those strong connections and you're kind of expanding your network. So I think I feel like even if I wasn't successful in the grant, it would have been a huge benefit for me to go through that process myself anyway. So prior to the visit, um, I spent um, six months in Chicago in Northwestern University in Illinois. So March to September of 2019, um, which is probably one of my last, one of the last of my cohort to go across to the States. I went on the research focused one. Um, I'd never been to Chicago before uh, this visit, so it was very much going into the unknown. Um, the induction from Fulbright staff was hugely helpful in terms of the practicalities around visas and health insurance and they provided us with lots of documents and slides and information that I basically brought with me everywhere for those six months regardless of where I was because I did need to connect into them a lot in terms of how to liaise with the Fulbright Commission as well when, I'm, when I was over there. I also relied a lot from um, local university staff that I was going to be working with in terms of living arrangements and advice on um, whether they might recommend or where they might recommend I avoid in terms of living arrangements. That was usually, usually beneficial as well. And as Suja mentioned, one thing that I wanted to, I suppose, iron out as much as possible, and one thing that I built into my Gantt chart in my application was that I would seek ethics approval and institutional review board approval 
from the local sites in advance of my arrival so that when I arrived, I could make maximum use of the time, my six months for data collection. So that was something that we could start working on together before I arrived and before we met in person. And that's something that was hugely beneficial in terms of making sure I could meet the goals uh, that were, I set out as well. So this was what I was met with upon arrival. Um, Chicago was minus nine degrees Celsius when I arrived in the first week of March and was very much frozen over with piles of snow everywhere. It was absolutely stunning. The campus in Northwestern University is on Lake Michigan, which was mostly frozen over as well. So I was based in the uh, School of Communication at Northwestern University, and I was based with the ATLAS team. The ATLAS stands for Advancing Themes, Leaders and Systems. So this, the team I suppose, very closely aligned to the kind of work we do in health systems and in the School of Nursing, Midwifery and Health Systems. So it made a lot of sense for me to go there because there's lots of alignments between our work and our research interests. The team itself is led by Professor Leslie de Church, and when I reached out to her, not having any previous contact, um, and being very nervous about cold emailing people about not knowing what kind of response you'd get. Like Suja, I got a response back, I think within 30 minutes, I was amazed. Um, she was delighted to host me. And I suppose that was my first indication of how well-renowned Fulbright is over there, that people are so eager to host Fulbrighters as well, not just receive Fulbright scholarships, but to host a Fulbrighter is a prestigious thing in itself as well. So on the team, um, there's lots of uh, PhD students, um, undergraduate lab assistants and some postdocs. It was a small team that I got to know well, which was great. So they have lots of expertise in quantitative research methodologies, and that's what I wanted to learn from them in terms of some of their networking, advanced networking techniques. And what I hope to share with them, what I did share with them, was some of my qualitative uh, expertise in terms of supporting some of their students. So lots of their work was around teams, team functioning, team effectiveness and team coordination. But lots of their work wasn't in the healthcare setting. It was actually with NASA and space teams and with the US Army teams. So in my application, I made the argument for understanding what we could learn from those contexts and bring into healthcare and use methodologies that are, um, I suppose, relevant to any kind of these kind of any kind of contexts where teams are in operation. So I think that was something novel in terms of a different context that we're going to work with, but obviously learnings that had wide applicability into healthcare as well. So while I was at Northwestern University, and I think this will be common of lots of the, the large universities, certainly around the US, um, they had an international visiting scholars network in the university. So this was not just for Fulbrighters, but for any kind of visiting scholar or visiting student. And this is a really active network that met at least once a week and they had held ho they hosted events and they had lunches. So it was a great way for, to get to know people that were in a similar situation in terms of in a new city, not knowing a lot of people and trying to get to know the, the college and the campus. There's also the Ireland network that operates around the US basically for expats and people with strong Ireland connections. And that's something that I was introduced to when I was over there and given membership to, which is great. So it was a way to know what's going on in terms of events around Ireland. And being there for St. Patrick's Day was one of those events. So getting a gang together to watch the, them die of the river green in Chicago was a great day out. There's also the, the Fulbright network, which uh, Emma has alluded to already. And this is obviously a huge network and it's not just Irish visitors to the US, it's visitors from around the world coming to the US that come together in this network. So that's a great opportunity to build collaborations and just to I suppose, really explore um, different sites and different ways of working together as well. So through um, my work at Northwestern and work with the work with the School of Communication, I was also linked up with people in the School of Medicine and people in the School of Medicine managed to link me into the hospital network in Chicago. So this really supported me in enabling to collect data in, in the Lurie Children's Hospital as well. So all of these connections kind of were in addition to those that I originally planned for, and those were hugely beneficial in terms of growing my international network, but also enabling me to do the research that was planned. Some final a few reflections on my experience. Um, Fulbright is extremely well known in the US and it kind of surprised me how widely known it is. So I think we have some, it's kind of entered into popular culture enough in TV and the media that we'd hear things about it. But in the US, I mean, people would stop me at the supermarket and ask me about Fulbright uh, when I was trying to pay for groceries and stuff. So that's how well known it is, it's everywhere. One of the things that, um, a phrase I heard a lot, I suppose, when I was attending these webinars prior to my own application was that it opens a lot of doors. And I suppose I was a bit skeptical about that because I, I, I need to see something tangible. I need to understand what does that actually mean? 
But until you experience it, it's really hard to convey what that means because it just offers so many more opportunities that wouldn't be available to otherwise. I really do believe that it was being introduced as the Fulbright Scholar that got me in to work with teams in Lurie Children's Hospital and made me credible in their eyes as well. So I think that prestige that's attached to the Fulbright label is really beneficial in terms of getting you that first step in the door to allow you to prove yourself and prove your value. It was also a hugely beneficial experience in terms of working in a very different healthcare setting. So I had uh, guest access to the Children's Hospital and I was able to work with staff and do some interviews with staff there. And that was a great experience to, to see how the hospitals run there. But also a very different research environment where Northwestern's a privately funded university. So they have a very different way of working and a very different level of access to resources. Um, so it was just adapting to that very new uh, healthcare and research environment uh, was a good experience to have and a good skill to be able to report back on. As I've mentioned, while I, my host institution, my host team was the Atlas team at Northwestern School of Communication, I really did make a lot of connections beyond those that were originally planned and intended. So not just collaborations, but also friendships that have lasted well beyond um, my six month stay. Um, so as I mentioned, I was work I'm working still with um, the Feinberg School of Medicine at Northwestern and with colleagues at Lurie Children's Hospital, as well as with the Atlas team. So I kind of tripled what I intended in terms of the number of collaborations that emerged from that experience. Also, uh, fortuitously, lots of local collaborators have emerged from the Irish Fulbright Network. Um, so during that Fulbright induction that we had, um, when, just shortly after we were awarded um, the scholarships, I happened to sit beside someone at the lunchtime session and we got talking about our research. And since then, we've been working on grants together and we're doing research together. Um, and Michelle Flood, who is a, another Health Impact Scholar Award awardee, is based in RCSI. So we have very similar methodological interests. So we've been able to work together on grants and projects since then, which has been great as well. Um, just I wanted to flag that I really think the Fulbright is a really nice um, step in career development, especially for early career researchers, because I think it's a really nice indicator that you're on the path to research independence or teaching independence, and that you're, I suppose it's proof positive that you're developing your international network as well. I suppose for me personally, it's because of the new collaborations I started as a result of my visit to Chicago, it's led to new funding, new successful funding with collaborators in Chicago, including IRC funding and Royal Irish Academy funding that's come directly as a result of my experience in Chicago on the Fulbright. So that's been hugely beneficial in terms of getting further supports to build those other collaborations. My final, and if, if, I suppose if you hear anything from me today, it's the importance of talking to alumni and visiting the website for those stories. The thing that really encouraged me to apply was hearing the alumni stories and hearing the passion and the enjoyment that people got from their experience. And I think there's no better advocate for Fulbright than people that have been through the process. The stories and the blogs online are great, but I'd also encourage you to visit the website to look, at, look out for your campus ambassador and they can be able to link you up with people maybe that are closer in your field or um, that might be doing a similar methodology or something like that. But these are the people that kind of have a broad overview of what's happening in terms of your local university. So I think that was key for me and that certainly um, was very beneficial for me in helping to prepare my application as well. So thank you very much for your attention and I'm very happy to take any questions.